So hi everybody, my name is Kimberly Olson and I am the Managing Director of the New York City Arts and Education Roundtable. For those of you that don't know the Roundtable, we are a grassroots service organization based here in New York City that's working to improve and advance the state of arts education. We do this through professional development programs, advocacy, online resources and platforms in addition to hosting our Face to Face at Four, which is a digital version of our annual conference Face to Face. A few housekeeping notes before I turn it over to our fabulous session facilitators. If you are having trouble with Zoom, please refer to the one sheet that Kinsey, our roundtable coordinator, is going to put in the chat box. Uh, speaking of the chat box, we do encourage you to use this throughout the session to connect with other participants, to ask questions of us or the facilitators, and we will be sharing out a copy of the chat box following this call, in addition to giving you time at the end to save that to your computer as well. Um, this call does include, co we are offering closed captioning with this call. Uh, to activate that setting, please click the little arrow next to closed captioning. Um, it should be a button on your screen to show subtitles. And then in that same menu is also subtitle setting, which enables you to adjust the size of the closed captioning. Um, uh, just a note, you will need some room to move during this session. So please take a moment just to make sure you have that set up. Um, Feel free to be on video, off video, totally up to you. Also note that materials will be shared on screen and also via the chat box. Any copies of materials, resources will be forwarded along afterwards. A copy of this will be, this session is being recorded and also a copy of it will be sent to you in addition to being available on the Roundtable's Face to Face at Four video gallery on our website. The Roundtable is thrilled to offer Face to Face at Four as a free weekly digital learning series now through May 28th, due in large part to our generous sponsors. And I'm happy to say that today's, sponsor, today's workshop is sponsored by the City College of New York's Graduate Program in Educational Theater. A shout out to our Roundtable staff on the line to help us moderate this call. We have Kinsey Keck and Michael Scarella. They'll be monitoring the chat box and also highlighting questions, aggregating resources uh, during and after the call. I'm now going to turn things over to our facilitators from National Dance Institute. We have Kalia Marshall, lead teaching artist, choreographer, and equity advocate. Karen Moore, who is a teaching artist and choreographer. And Lee Padonia, who is a teaching artist and musician. So, take it away. Thank you, Kim. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Kalia Marshall. Um, I've been working with NDI for about 20 years now <laughs> um, as a teaching artist choreographer and um, this year newly as equity advocate. Um, I also have been teaching yoga since 2002 um, and am founder of a, a yoga space for people of color called Brown Sugar Yoga. Um, and it's nice to see all of you from all around the world and lots of our NDI families here with us too. Um, so Karen. Hi everyone, I'm Karen. It's so great to be here today. Um, my background is after my dance career, I uh, went back to school and became a classroom teacher and I, I did that for five years. And this is my second year as a teaching artist in public schools with the National Dance Institute. And Lee. Hi, I'm Lee Badania and I have been with NDI in some shape or form for uh, about 13 years now. They are all around the world and they have affiliate programs um, across the country. So I was with um, one of those affiliate programs in Columbus, Ohio, before I moved to New York. Um, and I have been playing piano longer than I can remember. And I am so thankful that I get to do this and I love that I get to be here today. And Lee has um, two screens going on. So depending on like if Lee's talking, you might see a screen without a picture. <laughs> it's just how, just how it's working for us today. So, um, so NDI, National Dance Institute, it's a nonprofit um, education organization that was founded in 1976 by ballet star Jacques D'Amboise um, through partnerships with schools, after school programs, public performances, teacher trainings. Um, we use dance as a catalyst to engage children and motivate them toward excellence. Um, both within their school settings um, and also within their lives. So we mostly work with elementary school children. Um, so 
you know, the way that Karen and I speak is sort of leaning in that direction toward, toward that age. Um, but hopefully you'll, you'll find these practices useful and you can use them for, you know, whatever age people you, you work with. Um, so NDI is, in NDI, the process is really important, but we're always working toward a, a big performance at the end of the year um, so that the school community and their families can celebrate all of their achievements. Um, so during the past few years, I've been really exploring how I can infuse mindfulness practices into my teaching in the classrooms. Um, you know, all of my, my yoga practices have been very impactful for my life. And um, at one point I realized like, oh, I should be doing this <laughs> with, with the students. Um, so, you know, it's like how, how to bring that into these very high energy uh, classroom spaces where we're working toward a goal and it feels like there's just not enough time. Um, so Karen and I have both been doing that work individually and then collectively came together to put our minds together to create this, um, this workshop today. So we started experimenting and asking the questions, um, how do we best transition children when they're coming into the classroom, when they might be coming in feeling upset, wild, um, really unfocused, like who knows what was happening before they, they came into our dance space. Um, how do we engage students who aren't buying in um, to what we're offering? Um, how do we create more community care in, within our classroom? And then the big one, how do we infuse these mindfulness practices, which we know are so impactful, into an already packed schedule? Because um, like, we got a show to put on people, you know? So um, how, do we, how do we bring that all together? Um, so both Karen and I have found in our own teaching that bringing these practices in um, is actually quite easy without disrupting, just disrupting the flow of the class um, and that it actually can save time, right, because if we're doing this, it can uh, take care of a lot of the classroom management stuff that, that tends to come up. Um, additionally, it creates a lot more individual and collective trust um, where students are able to connect to themselves. Um, then they're able to show up more for the work and, and feel like they can really bring their whole selves into that space. Um, so creating that time for, for self-reflection within, within the class um, often creates a deeper knowing for our students. It creates more buy-in, what we're offering them, a greater sense of community, um, and, and can increase productivity. So uh, as teachers working in New York City public schools, we're working with students from you know, all different socioeconomic backgrounds, all different racial and ethnic identities, different religious affiliations, different abilities, um, and so many more things. And uh, many of our students are experiencing trauma. We're not gonna do you know, like a whole talk about trauma-informed practices. That would be a whole other workshop. Um, pardon the sirens, but, um, but we, we do know that a lot of these practices can can support folks who are experiencing trauma and help them to to be more present sorry about that sorry i just muted myself of course those practices are also <laughs> great for us as as the the teachers in this space the adults in this space as well um, so I just wanted to read a, a quote from Amy Salzberg, who's a holistic physician, mindfulness coach and author. She says, mindfulness is paying attention to your life here and now with kindness and curiosity. So I'm going to turn it over to Karen. Okay, so thanks, Kalia. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about a visual schedule and uh, Kinsey or Kim will please share the visual schedule. So this is a copy of a visual schedule that I use in the classroom and I learned this from um, classroom teaching and I brought it into the dance class. The benefits of a visual schedule are it reinforces memory, independence, and mental organization. It gives an opportunity to provide literacy skills. It helps establish and build routines and there's stability and security in knowing what to expect from your class and what's coming up next. And it's especially helpful for children with autism who benefit from visuals and routines. And I also use it as a mindful behavior management tool. So how I do that is first I set up the schedule and we do it call and response style, which is what we often do in our dance class, which you'll see. So I would go through the schedule like greeting, greeting, check, check, warm up, warm up, check, check. So we start to build some excitement and routine around it. And then I have a popsicle, uh, popsicle sticks with everyone's names on them. And I give the popsicle stick cup a shape 
and draw out one of the student's names. And then that student gets to come up and turn the check mark over. And they know in order to have their turn, they have to be sitting in learning position, which would be like a cross-legged position, sitting with a tall back, and that their voices or their listening ears are on, which is like positive language for voices off for not talking. Um, and we create it, with it, we create a celebratory environment. And the children get really excited. Even in like third and fourth grade, I found the kids get so excited to come up and turn the check mark over. So we celebrate every student's opportunity to come up and have that turn. Um, and we'll revisit it a couple of times throughout the class. So I wanted to share that as a way to incorporate mindfulness and behavior management and also just providing that schedule and routine can be extremely beneficial um, to children of all ages. And with that, thank you for sharing the screen. Um, we're going to transition into our class. So we're, the class will begin seated, but if you're sitting in a chair, that's great too. Just have your feet in the floor and lengthen through your spine or you can sit on the floor in a comfortable position. We're going to be moving through the warm up to a standing position. And then Kalia is gonna lead us through an NDI style class and she's going to be incorporating mindfulness throughout the class as well. Just so you know what's coming ahead. I actually created a visual schedule for us. So I'll just give you a quick show so you know what's gonna happen as well. <laughs> if you can see it. It'd be probably a little bit of a glare, but we have our greeting, which was our introduction, mindfulness, the warm up, new dance steps, and then we'll close with the discussion today. Kalia, would you like to add anything? I don't think so. It's fair. All right. All right, everyone. <laughs> so find a comfortable seat, either on the floor or in a chair. If your feet are on the floor in a chair, lengthen through your spine. And if you're seated, lengthening tall through your spine. And make sure as we're doing the breathing practices, follow the rhythm and timing of your own breath and body. Make sure you're comfortable. You don't have to follow exactly uh, the breathing that I'm doing. Follow what feels right for you. Um, also, again, with the movement practices, really be mindful and aware of what feels good to your body. Make sure that you're safe. Make sure that you feel comfortable. And with that, we'll begin. Lengthening through your spine, the invitation is to either take your gaze downwards or close your eyes. And notice your breath as it moves through your body. And take a scan of your body, noticing how you feel. Noticing any sensations you're experiencing. What's your energy level like? And being sure not to judge anything, but just taking note of it. And then place one hand over your heart and one hand over your belly, supporting yourself with your hands. Connecting to your breath. Feeling your breath as it moves through your body. Open, lifting your gaze and bring your hands to your knee and make some big circles with your torso, feeling the fluidity through your spine. And then reverse the circles going the opposite direction. Two more times in your own timing, following the rhythms and patterns. 
hands of your own breath and body. And then roll up through your spine after your last exhalation. And we're gonna come to standing any way that feels good to you. You can move through your body like you're under the ocean, like you're seaweed, or you can come to standing however feels good. And stand tall in mountain pose. Take a deep breath and lift your shoulders up. Exhale, sigh it out. Inhale, lift your shoulders up. Exhale, sigh it out. One more. Moving breath, connecting your breath to your body. Palms up as you inhale, gently press your palms down on the exhale. On your inhale, lift your palms. On your exhale, press them down. All right, you're passing it back to me, Karen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Kalia, for some dancing. All right, cool. So um, usually in NDI, we wear sneakers, but since we're all probably at home, we decided to forego that um, and be barefoot. So whatever works for your feet, great. Um, we're going to move into some high energy movement now. So 
This year in NDI, our theme has been soul music. Amazing. It's been so fun. Um, and we're going to learn a sequence that I have taught some of my fourth graders this year. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. So we're going uh, to step back here and we're going to do mirroring. So I'm going to go with my left side. You'll be with your right side. So everyone just shake your right side. Give a big shake. Good. So that's the side that's going to go first. All right. So I'm going to start with my feet. I go first. You go second. The first step, the right leg, we lift up the knee super big and then take a bow. So, oh gosh, I had a feeling that was going to happen <laughs> where someone would call me, um, but I don't know if I can do my music without being on a, if I'm on airplane mode. So we'll just hope that doesn't happen again. So we're, we're going to do right leg, right, left, right. Ready? Five, six, let's try it. Go. Right, left, right. Good. So the count one and count two, it's one and two. We, we lift the knee really high, right? And then the other leg comes in. So it goes right, together, right. Ready? Five, six, here we go. Right, together, right. Beautiful. I go to the left. I go left, right, left. Ready? Five, six, here you go. Left, right, left. I do that one more time. I go left, right, left. Ready, steady. I hear you go left, right, left. I put it both together. I go right, left, right, then left, right, left. You go right, left, right, and left, right, left. I go one and two, then three and four. You go one and two, three and four. All right, thumbs up if you got that. I can only see one screen of people, but it's looking good for <laughs> this group. All right, let's go a little bit faster. I go first, five, six, seven, I go one and two, three and four. You go one and two, three and, yeah, lift those knees up. I go one and two, three and four. Ready, go. Knees are high and three and four. With my arms, my hands are stretched, I push to the sky. I go push to the right, push up to the left. You go push to the right and up to the left. Good. Really press and press, press and press. You go. Press, 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 and press. I put the feet and arms together. Ready? I go. To the right, to the left. You go. To the right, to the left. Yes, I go. Right, 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 left, right, left. You go. Right, left, right, left, right, and freeze. Yes, yes, yes. Freeze here. Stretch those arms. Beautiful. From there, your right foot is going to step forward Hands clap up to the sky. Boom. Try it. Go. Yes. See if you can come all the way up on your tippy toes. This is called the mountain step. So we're reaching up to the top of the mountain. And then our, it's like the, there's a glacier up there. It's going to melt down. So go melt, 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 melt. And then we tap our legs on count eight. So it goes like this. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's try it together. Ready, steady. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Yes. You can go as low as you want to go at the end. Down, down, down to the valley. All right. We're going to put it together. We press to the right. We press to the left. Clap up. Melt, melt, melt. And eight. Five, six. Ready, ready. Here we go. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Reach to the top. And melt, and melt, and tap. Yes. That looks awesome. The only thing is, it's a lot faster than that. <laughs> so it goes one and two, three and four, clap, six, seven, eight. Are you ready for it? Here we go. Five, six, five, six, ready, and one and two, three and four, clap, up, six, seven, eight. It looks pretty good. But did anybody make a mistake? It's totally okay if you make a mistake. If you make a mistake, what do you think you should do? Just keep going. All right. All right. Let's try it again. I see a yes. I don't know if that meant like, yes, I totally made a mistake or yes, this is super fun, but whatever it is, <laughs> it's all good. Let's do it again at speed. Here we go. Five, six, ready, and one and two, three and four, step right, six, seven, eight. Awesome. Let's try it with some music, shall we? Um, so the thing that happens with the Zoom is that there's a delay, which you might notice as you're dancing, it might look like everybody else is off time, but they're on time with themselves, so that's good. So we can't have Lee play live for this section, um, but I have music 
that was recorded by Lee. So Lee is still here with us in this moment. All right, so let's do this. All right, get ready. Get your hands ready, fingers are spread. We're gonna to the right, to the left, up, dun, 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 dun. Five, six, here we go. To the right, to the left, up, six, seven, out. Beautiful, I just wanna see this. I just wanna see this. Right, left, right, left, right, left, reach. Just that, breeze on the reach. Get ready, five, six, here we go. One and two, three and four, reach. Yes, and if you're late on the reach, no worries, because you have the melt to catch up with us, okay? One more time, mountain step, and then we'll move on. Get ready, five, six, here we go. One and two, three and four, three, six, seven, eight. Yes, I'm also noticing some of you are looking up when you clap your hands, and that's awesome. So if you want to look to the top of the mountain, beautiful. All right, let's come here. This is our bookmark. Now we're going to step to the left. We go down, up, down, up. Try that. Down, up, down, up. I go all the way around. Now you try it. All the way around. Good. Finish low. Hands on your knees. Put it together. Here we go. We go down, up, down, up. Then all the way around and finish. Great. Let's try it twice as fast. Oh my goodness, good mark. Step out to the left. Here you go. Down, up, down, up, all the way around. Finish. Yes. One trick I use is I use my hands. So as I'm down, I press up my hands so I can pop up to the side. Let's try it again. Five, six, step to the left. Down, up, down, up, all the way around. Rich. Yes. All right. That step is called the valley step. Everyone say valley step. Sounds good. Let's put the mountain and the valley together. You ready? Big good time. You ready? Five, six, pushing to the right. Here we go. Right and up. Ba, ba, ba. Go up. Six. Step left. Down. Up. Down. Up. All the way around. Freeze. <laughs> Did we get it? Mostly. Mostly. Okay, good. All right, let's try one more time just for good luck. Get ready, five, six, here you go. One and two, three and four, up, six, seven, eight, step down, up, valley, all the way around, finish. Yes! I love it. You guys are so great. All right, take a big shake, shake it out. Deep breath in, deep breath out, deep breath in, and deep breath out. All right, my heart is pumping, I love it. Okay, so we just finished the valley step. Our hands are on our knees here. The next step is called the river step. And we kind of did a similar movement in the warm up. So you're gonna go to the right. Whoosh, a big wave to the right, then to the left. Whoosh, then you go right, left. Whoosh, and back to the right to finish. Whoosh, good, so the rhythm is this, slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Try that. Slow, slow. Good. Just say it after me. I go slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Say that. Slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow. All right, let's try it together. When you lean, really use your whole spine. Don't forget your head. Yeah? Here we go. Hands on knees. The river. A five, six. Here we go. Slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Yeah, let's put the valley and the river together. Come here, right foot is forward. This is our bookmark. We just finished the mountain step. We're gonna step into our scoops and then go right away into river. Five, six, ready, go. Down, up, down, up, all the way around river. Right and left and quick, quick, slow. Beautifully done. All right, we're gonna put together the mountain, the valley, and the river. All right, here we go. We're going to use another piece of lovely music recorded by Lee. You ready? I wasn't quite ready for that. That's a quick count. In. All right, ready? Mountain, big press, big knees. Lift them up. Five, six, here we go. One and two, three and four. Reach up. Six, step, step to the left. Down, up the valley step. 
Now the river to the right. Go right. And left. Right, left. Beautiful. Try it again. Five, six. Here we go. Mountain. Reach up. Get low. Down. Up, down. Up. River, go slow. Slow. Quick, quick, slow. Yes. I love it. It's so amazing. Do you think we can do it faster than that? Oh my gosh. I don't know, y'all. My heart is beating so fast. Whew. I think we can do it though. I think we can do it. Super speed. Are you ready for super speed? I have some super speed music. This is to the music, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell. Love this song so much. <sighs> triple, it's not really triple the speed. Let's pretend. Triple the speed. Oh my gosh, here we go. Ready, five, six, ready, go. One and two, three and four. to your heart. Feel your heartbeat. Feel your breath. Good. All right, we just have one more step. One more step. This is the fancy turn step. I'm going to turn and face, I know gasp, someone says. <laughs> this is what we do for our kids, right? Um, they got a lot of energy, so we got to get it out. So I'm going to face this way for this one. We just finished our slow to the right. Our left foot is free to step. We're gonna step it on the diagonal. So take a step forward on the diagonal. Then your back foot, your right foot's gonna tap in, tap your toe next to your other foot, and then step it back right where it was. Okay, so we're here. We're gonna go left, tap, back. Step, tap, and back. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight, step, tap, back. Try that again. Five, six, seven, eight, step, tap, back. All right, I think you've got it. So now I'm gonna face you. This time, when you take your step, present your hand. Like you're serving up a nice a pizza pie. Serving up a pizza pie. So we go step, when we tap, our back arm's gonna make a big rainbow in the sky to clap with the other hand. And then we make a rainbow to go back. Open again, yeah. Let's put it together. I go, then you go. Five, six, here I go. Step, tap, open. Ready, steady, here we go. Step, tap, open. Good. You know what I noticed? I cheated a little bit on the first time. I made a tiny little rainbow. We want to draw a huge rainbow in the sky. Let's try it again. Five, six, here we go. Step, tap, open. Oh yes, I love those rainbows that I just saw. Now, your back leg, you're gonna tuck it in. Tuck it in as high as, as you can for yourself, okay? So this leg, we're gonna tuck it in and we're gonna turn to the left and then our foot will come down to land. So it goes like this, turn, land. Let's try it. Back leg lifts up. Yes, that's it, turning to your left. Five, six, ready, go, turn, land. I recommend bending your knees when you land. That will help you to balance, all right? So the rhythm goes like this, step, tap, open, turn, land. Try it, five, six, here you go. Step, tap, open, turn, land. It's pretty quick, let's try it again. It's pretty quick, turn, land, say that, go. Turn, land, that's how fast it is. Let's start from our river bookmark. Left foot steps forward, five, six, here you go. Step, tap, open, turn, land. And then at the very end, you add a pose. It could be a high pose, it could be a low pose. It could be a dramatic pose. It could be a shy pose. I don't know, whatever you want. <laughs> Any kind of pose you want at the end. But since we're getting ready for a performance, probably something that's really big and expressive, okay? So let's try turn, land, pose. Ready? Just from the turn. Five, six, ready, go. Turn, land, pose. Oh yeah, I love the drama that I'm seeing. Excellent. All right, let's Put it all together. I keep getting out of the stream. All right, we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna use our beautiful, slower tempo, eight and a mountain high enough. All right, deep breath in, deep breath out. Tense up your whole body, tense, 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 and let it go. Is it okay if you make a mistake? Absolutely, tense, 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 let it go. Good, shake it out, shake it out. All right, get ready. Here it comes. It's coming quick. 
Ready? Mountain step, here we go. One and two, three and four, reach up. Six, step down, step left. All the way around, river to the right. Quick, quick, here's a big step. Step, tap, open, turn, land, pose. Good, let's practice the river into the, the last one again. Ready? Oh, there it was. <laughs> um, let's practice river one more time. The whole river into the whole fancy turn step. Five, six to the right, here you go. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, here you go. Step out, tap, open, turn, land, pose. <laughs> Good. All right, this is so exciting. I wanna try an experiment now. The experiment is, if you feel comfortable having your video on, you will, and you're gonna put your settings on gallery view so you can see your awesome teammates if you haven't already done that. If your first name starts with the letter A, B, C, D, 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 until H, I know that's not halfway through the alphabet, but I'm assuming there's not so many names that start with like X, Y, Z in, in the US, although I know some of you are other places. Um, A through H, you're gonna go first. You're gonna do the whole sequence. I'm gonna do it with you. Everyone else, your job is to watch and in the chat, write compliments for your teammates. Anything that you see that you're loving, put it up, put it in there, right? And then we'll switch, the other group will go and the first group will get to write compliments for everyone. Cool, we ready to go? All right, A through H. Here we go, standing tall. Oh gosh, from the tippity top. You know what? Yeah, we'll play this. comments. I'm seeing that river, those rainbows. Amazing. Woohoo. A through H killed it. <laughs> All right. H I. I through Z. Are you ready for it? I through Z. Come on. It's okay if you make a mistake. We all make mistakes. It's part of being human. We just keep going. Use our teammates for support. Okay. Okay. Get your hands ready. A five, six. Here we go. shows us what you got. Loving the poses. These are great compliments. <laughs> I love it. All right, you guys, we have one last thing to add into this, which is actually, we don't really have a lot of time. We're going to do it just one more time all together as a group. This time, this time we're going to add in an entrance. So you'll hear the cue. Boom, 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 boom. Right, that's like Lee saying five, six, five, six, seven, eight, or get ready to go. Um, so you're gonna hear the cue, and then you have 16, actually 15 counts to enter. So you'll be at the side of your space any way you want. Ooh, 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 ooh. You're gonna come in, and then on count 15, stand tall. You have one count to get ready to go, okay? Bring it, bring your style, bring your power, bring your, your love, your energy, and we're gonna do it this one time. Should we do fast? Or should we do slow? Should we do the same tempo we just did or you wanna like go for it and rev it up? If, I, if you wanna do slow, go like this. If you wanna do fast, go like this. All right, I'm seeing more fast. The fast wins, here we go. <laughs> I love it, okay. Good, go to the side of your space, whatever space you're in. Here it is. Fifteen counts, ready, up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, ready, go. One and two, three and four, up, six, seven, and eight, go down, up, down, up, all the way around, river. Fifteen counts, ready, up. 
Nicely done, dancers. That was fantastic. To close your eyes, take a hand to your heart, hand to your belly. Close your eyes or find a downward gaze. Notice your heartbeat. Notice your breath. Notice your energy. Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling energized? Maybe you feel both at the same time. Just notice what's there. All right, let's take a deep breath in and a breath out. Release your hands, float your eyelids open. All right, it's time for us to say our NDI goodbye before we have some discussion time. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Karen. Hi everyone. So we're going to say goodbye to each other at NDI. We, we do like a choreographed goodbye and you can find a comfortable seat, whether that's in a chair, on the floor, wherever feels right for you. So I'll give everyone a moment to find a seat. And we're going to say goodbye with American Sign Language. So this is thank you. Thank you. This is dancers. This is teachers. This is musicians. This is friends. This is and, and this is goodbye. Just gonna slightly adjust my computer. So everyone find a comfortable seat and lengthen through your spine. Take a deep breath and lift your shoulders up. Exhale, sigh it out. Again, inhale, lift the shoulders up. Exhale, sigh it out. And your own timing again. And then place both hands over your heart and imagine you can take a deep breath right into your heart on your own timing. Take a deep inhale and exhale breath. And then float your eyes open and let your hands settle down. And now we're going to transition into reflection and discussion. So if you if you'd like to move, I'm actually going to move to the table. And Kinsey and Kim, could you please share the techniques and practices document? Thank you so much, everyone. That was awesome. <laughs> Hope that you feel good. I know Kinsey is on it. Great, thank you. So we're, we're going to go through some of the practices, the mindfulness practices, and also the NDI teaching techniques that, that we just experienced together. So the first NDI teaching technique is the echo system, which is I go, you go. And you notice that's how Kalia taught the class. She would go first and then everyone would follow. Um, and normally in an NDI class, it's I go with the lead teacher and whoever is co-teaching or assisting 
they would go with the, with all of the other dancers. So Kalia was actually doing like double duty. She was kind of doing I go, we go. Um, but the call and response system is really successful in teaching children. Mirroring the movement, if you also notice, Kalia was using her left arm and leg when we would be using her right, just easier for the children to see instead of having to um, reverse things. And we love facing the children, so we don't use mirrors at NDI. We always face the children so we can have that connection with them with actual eye contact. Another NDI teaching technique is naming the steps. Um, Kalia used the mountain, the valley, the river. It makes it more fun for the kids. It's actually easier to remember when you just say, hey, go to the mountain step instead of like this third count of eight. Varying the voice is another technique from NDI. So we wanna have that engagement and we build excitement. You can change your voice or you can use a whisper voice um, or even no, no voice at all. Sometimes we'll teach a class in sign language and it's highly effective to change your voice or to use no voice at all in terms of having student engagement. And also it adds a level of joy and playfulness to the class. Um, in every NDI class, we integrate games and challenges. So Kalia did the tempo challenge where everyone um, has a super challenge. Okay, everybody, let's turn up the speed dial and we're gonna have a tempo challenge. Um, also splitting the class in half and giving compliments is like a game or a strategy to split the class in half providing that opportunity to not only be a critical thinker, a critical audience member, and to notice compliments, but also feels great. It's a great practice to give and receive compliments. Um, and it's wonderful to provide that opportunity for the children to do that. Um, infusing drama and humor. Want to make the class really engaging and fun for everyone and establishing those connections with each other. And um, you can also have an invitation to close your eyes in the class. It can be really fun for the kids, like, okay, now try it with your eyes closed. Um, and we say invitation, as well as with any type of the breathing practices, if you noticed, um, I didn't say close your eyes. I said the invitation is to either close your eyes or take your gaze downwards. Children who have experienced trauma, um, to ask them to close their eyes could be um, very anxiety producing. So we always want to give the invitation and to make sure that we don't give preference to either one. Both are completely even, close your eyes or bring your gaze downwards. Um, and then we like to add the performance context with NDI, which is the lights, the curtains, and now we're gonna have the audiences here. And it's a way to bring in, if you have a classroom teacher or anyone sitting in the audience in the house, um, we also include them in that, like now they're the audience and they could look for compliments. But we like to say like, and now we're opening the curtain and the lights and the audience is ready and the dancers are on stage. So we're always creating that performance context. It helps us build to the performance as well as makes the class uh, fun and enables us to use our imagination. Karen, I'm just gonna jump in yeah. so and ask in the chat. Um, oh, sure. I have one more question in a little bit, but um, how do you integrate varied capacities, abilities, once you start getting fast and have lots of steps? Um, that's a great question. And I think it, it you know, really depends. Um, we, you know, this is sort of like our basic model. And certainly we do have children with different capacities. And um, depending on, you know, if it's a child who has delayed processing, then maybe the assistant teacher is spending a lot of time next to that person, or we might assign a student who they feel really comfortable with to help count them in to, to kind of click and remind them that like, okay, it's time to go. Um, and I had a student like that this year. And I found that at the beginning of the year, it was challenging for him. But then by you know, when we finished in March, he was like right on it with everybody else. Um, and of course, uh, I had a student last year who had, um, he used either uh, <laughs> sticks, what are those called? Um, some people call them sticks under your, you know, I don't know, a scooter or what is the word? <laughs> sure. Crutches. You, crutches. Crutches. <laughs> Um, which some people do I'll call, also call sticks, but he used crutches or a, a scooter and we ended up doing um, like setting a warm up so that we could figure out with him what, uh, what an appropriate way for him, like a way that he could access that movement. Um, and then we created a whole dance that was using chairs and using scooters and um, so that there are different options for different people, but he wasn't the only one who was doing his option. Um, so that's just one, one little example but we also have classes for for children with disabilities there's a whole program called the dream program 
um, which is specifically for children with disabilities. And so we have a lot of children who are in wheelchairs or who have, um, you know, lots, lots of different things that they're, you know, that they're living with and, and dancing with, so. I just noticed too a question about giving compliments. If only certain students get acknowledgement, how do you handle? Um, one way to do it is give a compliment to the whole group. Could be like the direction, right? So watch, we're gonna watch the, and we often will name the groups. So uh, like we'll split the room in half and ask one child, like what's your favorite dessert? And they'll say, you know, ice cream sundae. And the other group could be brownie. So like the brownie group will give the ice cream sundae group a whole group compliment, a whole a team compliment. Um, I've also done in an actual regular classroom of saying like giving children to watch, assigning them a, a partner to watch, and then giving a compliment to that student so that everybody has someone and you can use the teachers as well for that. Um, did you want to add anything, Kalia? Uh, oops. Am I unmuted right now? <laughs> okay. Um, no, I don't think so. Someone says all people should be able to dance. Yes, absolutely. All people can dance. And in our dream program, we have someone who she can only move her eyebrows and she is amazing <laughs> and does dance. And, and we actually just taught you what we would probably teach in what four classes, maybe, right? <laughs> so when we teach it to the children, we do like chunks. We really chunk it down into these like bite-sized pieces. So we work on mastery. So we would practice and play games around a small a uh, piece of choreography with making sure that everyone has mastered it before we move on. We were just giving you more of an overview of a class maybe several weeks in. Um, can I, I, I just wanted to compliment you on it. I, I'm sorry I had to stop because I had a stomach ache before it so I couldn't really complete, but I have a memory problem and I was worried I couldn't um, get the sequence, but the teaching method was so well that I was able to keep up with the sequence and the steps. So I wanted to compliment you on your method. I think it's really strong. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, and then I, I will go through some of the mindfulness practices that were embedded. Uh, we begin with a body scan and Kalia also did another body scan. So checking in with everyone and, and have giving everyone an opportunity to notice how they're feeling like building that time in because so often we just go through our day and we don't really stop to notice like how am i feeling what does my body need right now so we we guide them to notice the sensations in the body the feelings in their body if they're tired or if they're energized and then we do that again so maybe like after the warm-up at the end of the class and it's not to be like you, you know, no one is made to feel badly if they're tired. We all get tired. It's really just to notice how you're feeling and notice if anything that you're doing changes that. Does breathing make you feel more energized? Do you feel like after you dance, do you feel like a change in your energy level? Or are you more tired? And everything is valid and, and okay and accepted. But it's just building that in so, we, so the children start to become aware of their own feelings. Because obviously a big part of mindfulness is building that self-awareness and being able to tap into your own inner resources so you can help regulate how you feel. Um, heart belly breath, that was one hand over the heart, one hand over the belly. Uh, it provides support. I don't know if anyone felt that the first time I did that. It actually, to me, it feels soothing right away. Um, it will be different for everyone. But again, it's just a moment to check in, to check in with yourself, to feel your hands on your body, to feel your breath move through your body. Um, and just giving a moment, it really doesn't take long to connect to your breath. A ball of energy is when we rub our hands together and create the heat. And my experience is like some kids haven't really done that before. So they'll actually think like, oh, wow, yeah, my hands, it gets hot. <laughs> I didn't notice that. And so it's like this ball of energy that you can create. And then again, you build your own ball and inhale and exhale on your own time. And again, this is something that kids can do and they can use. And, and we start to teach them like, if you're feeling nervous, if you have a test coming up, if you're feeling anxious about something, you know, you can use these strategies to help calm your body and your mind. Balloon breath is the breath that really expands and opens everything and then contracts and rounds in. Uh, moving breath. Moving breath is really any breath where you connect movement to the breathing. So you can do like um, inhale up, exhale down. I did inhale, lift your palms, exhale, gently press your palms down. Um, Kalia did a uh, similar moving practice within the um, dance combination. Moving breath. 
And again, you inhale as you expand usually, and usually exhale would be a contraction or a twist. Tree pose is an opportunity to practice balance as well as single pointed focus. So focusing on one thing, um, you know, kids are often taught to pay attention, right? <laughs> and there's, this is like a great way to practice focusing on one thing. It really helps to, to have that one spot. It also helps for balance, right? So we tell them, focus on one thing that isn't moving, steady your gaze there. And again, um, a lot of kids will recognize tree pose and they want to go right away to lift their leg as high as they can <laughs> above their knee. But letting them know, having your foot on your calf or you're the ball of your foot on the floor and your heel on your ankle is the same. They're all practicing balance and each one is just as important and valid as the next. So choose what feels right to your body that day. And, you know, not to lift your leg as high as you can, but then you fall over, right? <laughs> so just like in life, it, it's like translates from the practice of tree pose to the practice of life. Like what, how can you balance yourself? What do you need to do to steady yourself? And what do you strive for? You know, strive for finding balance or lifting my leg as high as, I ca as you can. And mindful listening is what we did after the goodbye. When we listened to Lee play the music and we know, and obviously if we were with Lee and we would really hear the end kind of fade away so beautifully, <laughs> it's a little harder over Zoom. But when we no longer hear any sound from the piano, we place one hand over our hearts. Um, I love doing that with the children. And if, you, if you're working with music and you have live music, it's a really nice segue to then have like music time with Lee because we've just connected to her. But you can also use this with recorded music. Obviously you, you control the volume or a singing bowl, which can be really nice. And the children can take turns ringing the singing bowl. And when they no longer hear sound from the singing bowl, they place one hand over their heart. Um, and then Kalia, do you want to go through the last couple? Tense and release. Um, yeah, I think of time because <laughs> we're, we're kind of oh at time. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we are. it's a, a good way to just um, get out any nervous energy or frustration if they're like oh having trouble with a step that can be a, a great way to reset um, and so I Kinsey and Kim should we wrap it up or should we take a couple of questions um, I would say maybe let's take the one question that's in the chat box Okay. How do um, it is how how to keep mindfulness practices fresh and exciting for students? I incorporate it into all of my classes at the top of the day, but students sometimes lose interest over time. Yeah, I mean, I would say like we we packed a lot into that <laughs> that class today, and we wouldn't like do all of those every time. Um, so I think you know spreading them out. Um, I definitely like did the. The body scan for the first couple of weeks and then didn't do it for a while and then my students were like wait where, what about the body scan i want to do the body scan um so i think you know maybe just just spreading them out or finding finding new ways to do it you know like today we do this balance next next time we add a challenge to it next time we play with closing our eyes while we're doing it um so that you're kind of adding adding on and making it a little more more challenging each time That's yeah nice. i agree like Try doing different practices, different weeks, not doing maybe, you know, varying the practices. And then like Clea said, not doing some for a while and bringing them back. And also I found um, sometimes using music that they choose, right? So as long as it's obviously appropriate music, but if you use a song that the kids really connect to, um, that can be really helpful because then they get into it in a different way. Great. We're super so lucky. That. Thank you so much, Kalia, Lee, and Karen. Um, I know that NDI does offer a lot of teacher trainings as well, so we'll be sure to follow up um, in our email and with this recording and the chat box with resources for that too. Um, a copy of this session, as I said, will be emailed to everybody that registered it, within the next two days. It will also be made available on our face-to-face -face video gallery online. Um, let's see. Kinsey posted a link in our chat, but coming up next week on Face to Face at four, we're starting our Meetup Mondays. So on April 27th, we're gonna have a mid-career professionals meetup. That's Monday at four o'clock. And then on April 30th, so that's next Thursday, we are going to have a session called Using Video, Best Practices for Online Auditions, Classes, and Final Presentations. Um, also, just a shout out to a future session that's happening on May 14th, which are tools and tips for working with the developmental disability community. I know there was some uh, chat about that in the chat box. 
And last but not least, we're just gonna leave the call open for another minute or so in case you'd like to save the chat. You can do that by clicking the three little dots in the right hand corner and then save. But please know a copy of it will also be emailed to you and available on our website following the webinar. So with that, thanks so much for joining us for Face to Face at Four and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Well, let me put a link. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> link in the chat to the NDI Collaborative, um, so you can check there, and I'm sure they'll send it out. Auntie will send it out as well, um, but for upcoming teacher trainings and, and workshops. So, thank you all so much. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs>